And earlier today, the nation's leading health experts testified before the House Select Subcommittee on the Coronavirus Crisis. Joining me now is the chairman of that committee, Democratic House Majority Whip Jim Clyburn of South Carolina. Uh, Congressman Clyburn, it's great to have you with us back on the program. Thank you, sir, for your time. Uh, if Pfizer's CEO is right about a third dose, is the United States prepared to meet the increased demand? Well, thank you very much for having me. I have absolutely no idea what the answer to that question is. I do know this, uh, that the president uh, has said that within, what, three or four days now, everybody, uh, may every adult, uh, can be vaccinated. And we are assured that there will be enough vaccines uh, for everybody uh, to get there. So if that's the case, it would seem to me that between Pfizer and Moderna, uh, and I think Johnson & Johnson, uh, when all uh, is said and done, uh, I think we'll be able uh, to have the vaccines that are necessary to even get a third one. And as soon as my year is up from next January, if that's what's required, I'm going to get it. So, sir, I appreciate your, your uh, candidness about that. During today's hearing, as you probably heard, Dr. David Kessler stressed the need to confront vaccine hesitancy across the country, certainly in some parts of rural America. And recent polling shows that the number of uh, the numbers have actually improved in the black community, but there are still big problems among Republican men. Do you think your GOP colleagues are doing enough to promote the vaccine? Well, I would think that science ought to dictate what we do. And those of us who find ourselves in leadership positions like here uh, in the Congress, as I emphasize over and over today, we ought to be getting vaccinated. We want to return to normal, so they speak. So then if you want to be normal, then let's do the normal thing uh, that human beings do. And that is we listen to the scientists, we follow their advice. That's how we got rid of polio. And that's how we got singles under control. And that's the way we get COVID-19 under control. I took the full polio vaccine uh, when I was a child. I remember the uh, polio visited my neighborhood twice. Uh, and uh, we virtually eliminated uh, polio with the vaccine. Thanks the two scientists, uh, Jonas Salk and Albert Sabin. We ought to listen to the scientists we had today. They will help us get to where we need to be as it relates to COVID-19. Allow me, sir, to change topics for a moment. Earlier today, uh, a few leading congressional Democrats introduced legislation to expand the size of the Supreme Court from nine uh, to 13 justices. Speaker Pelosi saying she will not bring the bill to the House floor and instead support uh, President Biden's commission to study the issue. This was one of the key issues that a lot of people said galvanized Democrats to go to the polls in 2020. Do you support the measure? Do you believe it should get a vote and be brought to the floor? I am going to be guided by the speaker on this because I am a supporter uh, of uh, President Biden's uh, commission to study this. There's no need to rush into this. Uh, let's let the commission go out, uh, look at uh, what their uh, recommendations might be, and then develop legislation. No, I'm not uh, going to be supportive of that legislation at this time. Well, let's talk about the other big story today, and that is the Derek Chauvin trial, nearly one year after George Floyd's killing. Do you believe we have made progress for racial justice in this country? Yes, we have. No question about that. All you got to do is look at the makeup of boardrooms around the country, make up of the legislatures around the country, look at the, uh, the Congress. Yes, we've made some significant progress, but we've got a long, long ways to go. And in one of those areas that we have not done well, it has been in law enforcement. And it's time for us uh, to take a hard look at how we conduct ourselves as it relates to law enforcement. Uh, for instance, qualified immunity uh, is not qualified immunity. It has become absolute immunity. Uh, and for us to say that we will have rules and regulations that will govern lawyers and doctors and hold them accountable, but we cannot have rules and regulations uh, to hold 
police officers accountable, that just doesn't make sense. I tell people all the time, my father was a minister, and one of the first things uh, I remember uh, about his presidency of his presbytery was defrocking a minister. Then he get rid of the church, they got rid of the minister. And we have bad ministers, but we also have uh, bad police officers. And so for us to uh, have police officers insulated when they do bad things doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.